Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Much. Speaker. Prime Minister, uh, Leader of the Opposition, Chief Justice, Mesdames et Messieurs les Ministres et les Députés, Ladies and Gentlemen, Ministers and, and Members of Parliament and accompanying Shalom. me. And thank you for inviting me to visit this remarkable country and especially for the opportunity to address the Knesset. It truly is a great honor and I also thank you for the honor of the key to the Knesset. So now I feel I can come and go whenever I choose. Whenever you choose. <laughs> and if I may, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of my wife, Laureen, and the entire uh, Canadian delegation, let me uh, just begin by thanking the government and pe people of Israel for the warmth of your hospitality. You have made us feel extremely welcome. You've made us feel immediately at home. Ladies and gentlemen, Canada and Israel are the greatest of friends and the most natural of allies. And with your indulgence, I'd like to offer a, re a reflection upon what makes the relationship between Canada and Israel special and important. Because the relationship between us is very strong. The friendship between Canada and Israel takes its roots in history, and it is nourished by common goals and strengthened at the highest level of trade, which is the expression of firm conviction. This friendship between us is rooted in history, nourished by shared values, and it is intentionally reinforced at the highest levels of commerce and government as an outward expression of strongly held inner convictions. There has, for example, been a free trade agreement in place between Canada and Israel for many, many years, an agreement that has already proven its worth, the elimination of tariffs on industrial products and some foodstuffs has led to a doubling in the value of trade between our countries. But this only scratches the surface of the economic potential of this relationship. And I look forward to soon deepening and broadening our mutual trade and investment goals. As well, our military establishments share information and technology. This has also been to our mutual benefit. For example, during Canada's mission to Afghanistan, the use of Israeli-built reconnaissance equipment saved the lives of many Canadian soldiers. All such connections, and I could mention All such connections, and I could mention many more, science and technology, all build strong bridges between us. Cependant, pour bien comprendre However, la relation particulière entre Israël et le Canada, Canada Israel, il faut regarder au-delà du commerce et des institutions. Il y a un personnel tissé par l'amitié et la parenté. However, to truly belonging. understand the special relationship between Israel and Canada, one must look beyond trade and institutions to the personal ties of friendship and kinship. Jews have been present in Canada for more than 250 years. In generation after generation, by hard work and perseverance, Jewish immigrants, often starting with nothing, have greatly prospered. Today, there are nearly 350,000 Canadians who share with you their heritage and their faith. They are proud Canadians, but having met literally thousands of members of this community, I can tell you this. They are also immensely proud of what the people of Israel have accomplished here, of your courage in war, of your generosity in peace, and of the bloom that the desert has yielded under your stewardship. Lorene and I share that pride. We share that pride and the understanding that what has been achieved here has occurred in the shadow of the horrors of the Holocaust. La compréhension du fait qu'il est juste appuyé Israël parce qu'après avoir connu la persécution durant plusieurs générations, le peuple juif mérite d'avoir son propre pays et mérite de vivre en sécurité et en paix dans ce pays. The understanding that it is right to support Israel because after generations of persecution, the Jewish, Jewish people deserve their own homeland and deserve to live safe, safely and peacefully in that homeland. Now let me repeat that. Canada supports Israel fundamentally 
because it is right to do so. This This, by the way, is a very Canadian trait, to do something for no reason other than it is right, <laughs> even when no immediate reward for or threat to ourselves is evident. On many occasions, Canadians have gone even so far as to bleed and die to defend the freedoms of others in far-off lands. To be clear, we have also periodically made terrible mistakes, as in the refusal of our government in the 1930s to ease the plight of Jewish refugees. But as a country, at the great turning points of history, Canada has consistently chosen, often to our great cost, to stand with others who oppose injustice and to confront the dark forces of the world. It is thus the Canadian tradition to stand for what is principled and just, regardless of whether it is convenient or popular. It is thus a Canadian tradition to stand for what is principled and just, regardless of whether it is convenient or popular. But I would argue, and as you know, Prime Minister, I have argued, that support today for the Jewish State of Israel is more than a moral imperative. It is also a matter of strategic importance, also a matter of our own long-term interests. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I said a moment ago that the special friendship between Canada and Israel is rooted in shared values. En effet, Israël Indeed, est le seul pays Israel du Moyen-Orient à s'être ancré depuis longtemps long dans, the the long dans les idéaux de liberté, de démocratie et de primauté de droit. Israël est le seul pays dans le Middle East qui a longtemps ancré dans les idéaux de liberté, de démocratie et de primauté de droit. Et ce ne sont pas des notions simples. Ce sont des choses qui, avec le temps et avec toutes les odds, ont prouvé qu'ils ont été, une fois et une fois, les seuls lieux dans lesquels les droits humains, la stabilité et la prospérité économique peuvent fleurir. Ces valeurs ne sont pas propriétaires ou elles ne sont pas appartenues à un peuple. Elles ne sont pas une nation. Ni sont elles une finalité pour les pays qui ont une vie plus longue. Sur le plan de la nature, les plus grands elles grandissent. Comme le plus grand elles grandissent, les plus grands elles grandissent. When they are threatened anywhere, they are threatened everywhere. And who threatens them? Or more precisely, what today threatens the societies that embrace such values and the progress they nurture? Those who scorn modernity, those who loathe the liberty of others, and those who hold the differences of peoples and cultures and religions in contempt. Those who often begin by hating the Jews, but history shows, up, shows us, end up hating everyone who is not like them. Those, those forces which have threatened Israel, the state of Israel, every single day of its existence, and which, as 9-11 graphically showed us today, Threaten all of us. Ou bien nous défendons nos valeurs et nos so intérêts ici en Israël. Nous défendons defend l'existence d'un État libre et démocratique et distinctement juif. Ou bien nous allons s'en recoudre sur nos plans, sur le plan de nos valeurs et de nos, et de nos intérêts dans le monde. Begin. And so we either stand up for our values and our interests here in Israel stand up for the existence of a free, democratic, and distinctively Jewish state, or the retreat of our values and our interests in the world will begin. Now, ladies and gentlemen, just as we refuse to retreat from our values, so we must also uphold the duty to advance them. And our commitment as Canadians to what is right, fair, and just is a universal one. It applies no less to the Palestinian people than it does to the people of Israel. Autant nous soutenons sans réserve le droit d'Israël de se défendre, right autant nous préconisons depuis longtemps un avenir juste et sûr long pour le peuple palestinien. Just as we unequivocally people. support Israel's right of self-defense, so too, Canada has long supported a just and secure future for the Palestinian people. 
And I believe we share with Israel a sincere hope that the Palestinian people and their leaders will choose a viable, democratic Palestinian state committed to living peacefully alongside the Jewish state of Israel. As you, Prime Minister, have said, when Palestinians make peace with Israel, Israel will not be the last country to welcome a Palestinian state as a new member of the United Nations. It will be the first. Sadly, we have yet to reach that point, but when that day comes, and come it must, I can tell you that Israel may be the first to welcome a sovereign Palestinian state, but Canada will be right behind you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, even support, firm support, doesn't mean that allies and friends will agree on all issues all of the time. As you and I know, Prime Minister. No state is beyond legitimate questioning or criticism. Indeed, Israel as is a democratic state makes such criticism a part of your national life. But our support does mean at least three things. First, Canada finds it deplorable that some in the international community still question the legitimacy of the existence of the State of Israel. Not, not notre point de vue sur le droit à l'existence d'Israël en tant qu'État juif est absolu et non négociable. Our view that Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state is absolute and non negotiable. Deuxièmement, le Canada est convaincu qu'Israël devait pouvoir exercer ses pleins droits d'État membre de l'ONU et profiter de sa souveraineté dans toute sa mesure. Second, Canada believes that Israel should be able to exercise its full rights as a UN member state and to enjoy the full measure of its sovereignty. For this reason, Canada has spoken on numerous occasions in support of Israel's engagement and equal treatment in multilateral fora. And in this regard, I should mention that we welcome Israel's induction this month into the Western Democratic Group of States at the United Nations. Troisièmement, nous ne refusons à critiquer Israël de façon isolée sur la scène internationale. Third, we refuse to single out Israel for criticism on the international stage. Now, friends, I understand that in the world of diplomacy, with one solitary Jewish state and scores of others, it is all too easy to go along to get along and single out Israel. But such going along to get along is not a balanced approach, nor, it is, nor is it a sophisticated one. It is just, quite simply, weak and wrong. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world where that kind of moral relativism today runs rampant. And in the garden of such moral relativism, the seeds of a much more sinister notion can easily be planted. And so we have written, witnessed in recent years the mutation of the old disease of anti-Semitism and the emergence of a new strain. We all know about the old anti-Semitism. It was crude and ignorant, and it led to the horrors of the death camps. Of course, in many dark corners, it is still with us. But in much of the Western world, the old hatred has been translated into more sophisticated language for use in polite society. People who would never say they hate and blame the Jews for their own failings or the problems of the world instead declare their hatred of Israel and blame the only Jewish state for the problems of the Middle East. As once Jewish businesses were boycotted, some civil society leaders today call for a boycott of Israel. On some campuses, intellectualized arguments against Israeli policies thinly mask underlying realities, such as the shunning of Israeli academics and the harassment of Jewish citizens. Most disgracefully of all, some openly call Israel an apartheid state. Now think about that statement. Think about the twisted logic 
and outright malice behind that. A state based on freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. Founded so that Jews can flourish as Jews and seek shelter from the shadow of the worst racist experiment in history, that is condemned and it is condemned in language, in the mass language of anti-racism. Friends, that is nothing short of sickening. May it s'agit de nouveaux visages de l'antisémitisme, un antisémitisme qui vise le peuple juif en prétendant viser Israël. But this is the face of the new antisémitisme. It targets the Jewish people by targeting Israel and attempts to make the old bigotry acceptable to a new generation. Now, of course, friends, criticism of Israeli government policy is not in and of itself necessarily anti-Semitic. But what else can we call criticism that selectively condemns only the Jewish state and effectively denies its right to exist, to defend itself, while systematically ignoring or excusing the violence and oppression all around it? What else can we call it when Israel is routinely singled out, targeted at the United Nations, and when Israel remains the only country to be subject to a permanent agenda item at the regular sessions? of its Human Rights Council. Ladies and gentlemen, any ju assessment, any judgment of Israeli actions must start with this understanding. Depuis 65 ans, For 65 years now, that the state of Israel, Israel has existed, les Israeliens ont tendu Israelis have had to put up with attacks and, and have never had one single day in of true peace. In the 65 years that modern Israel has been a nation, Israelis have endured attacks and slanders beyond counting and have never known a day of true peace. And we understand, we Canadians understand that Israelis live with this impo impossible calculus. If you act to defend yourselves, you will suffer widespread condemnation over and over again. But should you fail to act, you alone will suffer the consequence of your inaction. And that consequence will be final. It will be your destruction. The truth that Canada understands is that there is going to be a lot of effort put forth against Israel, against Israel and against all the countries of the world. And that is also towards the Israel Western world countries. Israel has faced up to this for Israel as many reasons as we have. But Israel is as uh, much more closely attacked. The truth that Canada understands is that many of the hostile forces Israel faces are faced by all Western nations. Israel faces them for the same reasons, many of the same reasons we face them. You just happen to be a lot closer to them. <laughs> of course, no nation is perfect, but neither Israel's existence nor its policies are responsible for the instability in the Middle East today. One must look beyond Israel's borders to find the causes of <laughs> to find the causes of the relentless oppression, poverty and violence in much of the region, of the heartbreaking suffering of Syrian refugees, of the sectarian violence and the fears of religious minorities, especially Christians, and of the current domestic turmoil in so many states. So what are we to do? Most importantly, we must deal with the world as we find it. The threats in this region are real, deeply rooted, and deadly, and the forces of progress often anemically weak. For too many nations, it is still easier to scapegoat Israel than to emulate your success. It is easier for them to foster resentment and hatred of Israel's democracy 
than it is to provide the same rights and freedoms to their own people. I'm convinced that a Palestinian state will see the light of day, and one of the conditions that will enable us to come is when the regimes that have been funding terrorism will realize that the road to peace is one with conciliation and not violence. I believe violence. that a Palestinian state will come, and one thing that will make it come is when the regimes that bankroll terrorism realize that, it is, that the path to peace is accommodation, not violence. Which brings, brings me to the government of Iran. Late last year, the world announced a new approach to diplomacy with the government in Tehran. Canada has long held the view that every diplomatic measure should be taken to ensure that regime never obtains a nuclear weapon. We therefore appreciate the earnest efforts of the five permanent members of the Security Council in Germany. Canada will evaluate the success of this approach not on the merit of its words, but on the implementation and verification of its promised actions. We truly hope that it will be possible to see to it that the Iranian government commit itself de la fabrication des armes nucléaires, mais pour le moment. Manufacturing le Canada nuclear arms, but for the moment, Canada uh, is very much in support with the sanctions we that we have imposed. We truly hope that it is possible to walk the Iranian government back from taking the irreversible step of manufacturing nuclear weapons. But for now, Canada's own sanctions will remain fully in place. And should our hopes not be realized, should the present agreement prove ephemeral, Canada will be a strong voice in the world for renewed sanctions. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me just conclude with this thought. I feel that Israel's history is the I greatest the story for the entire world. I believe the story of Israel is it is a story essentially of a people whose response to suffering has been to move beyond resentment and build a most extraordinary society. A vibrant democracy, a freedom-loving country with an independent and rights-affirming judiciary, an innovation world-leading startup nation. You've taken the collective memory of death and persecution to build an optimistic, forward-looking society. One that so values life, you will sometimes release a thousand criminals and terrorists to save one of your own. In the democratic family of nations, Israel represents values which our government takes as articles of faith and principles to drive our own national life. And therefore, through fire and water, Canada will stand with you. Friends, you've been... Thank you, friends. I know I should quit right there. You've been very generous with your time and attention. Lorene and I, and I know the entire delegation, thank you for your tremendous hospitality. Once again, thank you. Merci. Thank you for having us, and may peace be upon Israel. Thanks.